Rumors and leaks about AMD's upcoming next-gen AM5 socket have been going around for a while now. AM5 will bring new DDR5 memory, faster I.O., and more power delivery for the next-generation Zen 4-based CPUs. But most importantly, with AM5, AMD will make the switch to an LGA socket. That's short for LAN Grid Away. Previously, AMD used the Pin Grid Array or PGA technology for the desktop-based CPU all the way back from the Athlon to the latest Ryzen CPUs. Intel, on the other hand, has been using LGA in desktop for a long time now. So what are the differences between LGA and PGA? What is their strengths and what are their weak points? And why is AMD making the switch now with AM5? Stay tuned. The fundamental difference between LGA and PGA is very, very simple. You know the little pins that connect the CPU to your motherboard? Well, with an LGA socket, those pins are on the motherboard and the CPU is pushed against the pins. On a PGA socket, the pins are on the CPU and it just falls into the little pinholes on the motherboard. LGA, pins on the motherboard. PGA, pins on the CPU. It's that simple. But why does it even matter? Well, there are a number of important differences. Let's start with PGA because that's what AMD is currently using. An advantage of PGA is that it has gravity on its side. If you have installed any of AMD's Ryzen CPUs, you know how it works. The little golden pins, and yes, they're actually gold-bladed, they have corresponding pinholes in the motherboard socket. And if you adjust it properly, the CPU basically just falls into place. No force needed, gravity does the rest. There's usually a small retention lever so it doesn't fall out again if you tilt the motherboard, but that's it. The pins on the CPU with a PGA package are also more durable and thicker than the pins that are used in an LGA socket because you have to handle them, you have to do the insertion by yourself. If you're not careful, they can bend quite easily, but most of the time you can bend them right back and it will work again. I fix quite a lot of CPUs with bent pins in my time and it's always a nice thing that you can fix it and it works. That's what you like to see when you do it yourself. It's also a cheaper design because it's a simple slot in design. There's no expensive holding down mechanism. There is just holes and pins and that's it. The major downside for PC builders is that people often yank out the CPU when they try to uninstall the CPU cooler because the thermal paste acts like a clue when it's cold and with just a little force too much you pull the CPU straight out of its socket. Been there, done that. But again, easy to fix with some bending of the pins. The trick is to heat the CPU a little before you uninstall the cooler and then you twist it and it comes right off. The major downside of PGA from an engineering perspective is the size of the pins. The pins have to be a certain thickness because the consumer has to handle them and insert them into the motherboard pin slots. If they're too small and brittle, they will break easily and slotting them in would be a really high risk action. And that is the very reason why LGA is being used for AM5. You have to remember that these pins are used to connect the CPU with the motherboard. They handle all the I.O., be it memory, PCI Express, and of course power too. Modern CPUs need more I.O. and more power. And that's why you need more pins. Socket AIM4, which is currently used by AMD, has 1,331 pins. AIM5, on the other hand, is supposed to have 1,718 pins, quite a lot more and about the same amount as Intel's upcoming LGA 1700 socket. And with the smaller pin size on LGA socket, this increase in pins doesn't reflect on the size of the CPU package. Of course, you could try to create a PGA socket with the same amount of pins, 
but the whole CPU and motherboard socket would probably be become too large. LGA isn't without faults either, since the pins are inside the motherboard socket and they are very small and fragile, if they bend, most of the time it's a dead motherboard. I haven't seen a single successful LGA pin repair myself. I'm sure they exist, but they are rare. And the CPU needs some pressure to stay connected to the motherboard pins. That's why LGA sockets always have a very strong retention module that puts quite a lot of force onto the CPU. It has to press the CPU down against the pins of the motherboard. If the pressure is too little, the connection will be unstable and it won't work. And any system that needs pressure to work has a higher fault rate. But at least you won't yank the CPU out with the cooler if you try to uninstall it. AMD's Epic server and Threadripper high-end desktop CPUs already use LGA sockets because these require a lot more pins because higher power CPUs need more data and more power. And even with LGA, a Threadripper socket is quite huge. There you have it, the reason why AMD is switching to LGA with the upcoming AM5 socket. The next gen Zen 4 CPUs and the CPUs after that just need more pins to transfer the additional data and power required and a PGA socket would increase the CPU package size too much. LGA is the only feasible solution for AMD here. I always liked PGA more. It kind of feels like Lego slotting in the CPU into the motherboard. I could repair the pins myself, but the future clearly become, belongs to LGA. There's no way around it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and consider following for more content around CPU, GPUs and new tech in general. See you next time.